Thank you guys for staying up late with us here on The Factor Uncensored. First up on The Factor and only on The Factor, the Simpson family is simply put damn right pissed off and angry. It's been more than a month since the death of their loved one, Robin Simpson. Her husband, Michael Simpson Jr., is accused of brutally murdering her in front of their eight-year-old daughter here in Houston. Simpson is accused of stabbing Robin more than 100 times and mutilating her body beyond recognition. Family members say even cutting out, get this, her heart and her brain. Simpson was arrested and remains in jail in lieu of a $340,000 bond. All he needs to pay to get out is $34,000, the standard 10%. That is what's frightening to this family. I spoke with them today from their homes in Philadelphia. And joining us here on The Factor Uncensored tonight, we have the family of Robin Simpson. Joining us is Melanie Hatcher, her sister, Addie Fowl, her mother, and Michelle Martin, her best friend. First of all, we want to thank you all for joining us here on The Factor. Obviously, still a tough time. This still has to be fresh to you guys. Um, it's my understanding you're concerned about her husband uh, getting out on bond. Your thoughts about that, Ms. Fowl, first of all, the loss of your daughter and then him getting out on bond? Well, for what he did to her, the way he destroyed her body, there's no way he should have had a bond. That's how I felt. And as far as our family, we're still suffering about it. That's all. I'm, I'm, I'm just at a loss of words right now. And I understand the uh, situation. Uh, Malena, as sister, were there signs that things were going left in this relationship? There were no signs um, prior to two weeks leading up to this. Um, the only signs that we knew of was he just started taking pills for anxiety and he was acting like he wasn't doing anything. He stopped paying bills. He stopped being a father, a husband. He just was not doing anything. And Robin would tell me, you know, that he was just taking these pills to sleep. And then it went from one pill to another pill to multiple pills. And then <clears throat> I would tell her, I said, you know, he's going to pull you down the rabbit hole. So you need to like either leave you know, take her, take Essence to the Airbnb and get away. If not, then, you know, I don't know. It wasn't, it was no signs prior to this up until two weeks when he was taking the pills and the pills just made him into somebody different. But we never expected the violence because what she was telling us was he was just sleeping. He was taking pills and sleeping, taking pills and sleeping. Mm -hmm. That was it. And Michelle, did, as best friend, did you get the same story from her? Did she at any point feel like her life was in jeopardy or she just thought, you know, he's just taking these pills to sleep? Uh, I heard the same story. I don't think that Robin thought at any point that she was in danger per se. Mm -hmm. um, she didn't share that with us, but I know that there were instances. Um, but there were other things, you know, um, that he tried to have himself 302 to quite a few times, you know, two or three times right before he killed Robin. It almost feels like he knew what he was going to do. He premeditated what he was going to do because they were married for 12 years. All of a sudden, a couple weeks before you kill her, you're having anxiety, you're hearing voices, you're contemplating suicide, you're having all of these crazy thoughts. He chased her around the house before the time yeah. that he killed her with a knife. Mm -hmm. um, it's what we are now to understand. It was just a couple days before. So I think what he was trying to do was create a narrative of insanity. And he was trying to create paperwork. So he went and he visited um, a couple psychiatrists, psychologists. All of them gave him medicine. How? Mm -hmm. Do they not talk to each other? Do they not see something where they log in and see his name where he is doing, um, you know, going to different people and getting all of these different medications? So I think what he was doing was actually plotting an insanity defense for what he was going to do.
And Ms. Right. Robin even took him to her hospital where she worked. Mm. And I asked her when, to piggyback off Michelle um, about the three incidents where he went to the hospital three times in one week. Why didn't they commit him? And uh, she said, oh, he's just acting out, you know, nothing is wrong with him. He didn't fit the criteria. She would just say that. And I'm like, if he was admitted three times to the hospital, and but they keep prescribing him psych meds, but nobody is saying he's psychological or something is wrong with him or no. psychotic. So I would love to see his, his search history during the trial. What is the search history? What were you looking for? Mm -hmm. How do you know that you can go ahead and do this insanity defense? Now, now we're under to understand that if you're in Texas and you get insanity, the, the punishment starts at just five years, <laughs> um, regardless of the crime. So I firmly believe that he knew exactly what he was doing. He knew exactly where he was, you know, in Houston, which is like a democratic island in the middle of Texas, um, and, and the judge's leniency. And and that's exactly what has been happening. And Ms. Paul, you, you're concerned about that leniency with the bond being so low for him. I think what's the amount? Uh, three hundred and it's thirty-four thousand. Three hundred and forty thousand. No, thirty-four thousand. Thirty-four thousand. That's the ten percent of the three hundred. The three hundred. Yeah. So for murder, he got three hundred. And that's thirty thousand. Then for essence, he got um endangered. Forty thousand. He got forty thousand, and then that's the four thousand. So all he needs is thirty-four thousand to get out. And I'm sure the young girl, their daughter, should be frightened with this. He's horrified. Because according to published reports, he wanted to kill her too. Right. And that's the issue I have with that charge. She told the police that he tried to kill her, and why are they only charging him with aggravated yeah, assault so. instead of attempted murder? Still ahead tonight, the Simpsons and Simpsons loved ones continue to press for answers. He took her brain out, took out her heart. He gutted her like a fish. Incredible. We'll continue our discussion with the family next. And welcome back to The Factor Uncensored. Robin Simpson's family is still pressing for answers about the low bond amount for the man suspected of killing her. They tell me that decision has re-traumatized everyone in their family. Let's take a look. Have you guys heard from any of the investigators or the prosecutor, Kim Ogg's office, as of yet? No. No. We, 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 we heard you something. You guys have reached out, right? Like Yes, yeah. we reached out so, to the DA's office, and we knew more than she wanted to tell us. It's like they are waiting for the paperwork to be. It's still under investigation. Uh, we have to pull information from no. the DA. We spoke to the detective Watson no. early on. Like mm -hmm. we haven't heard from them in over a month almost. Yeah. Um, Can I say something? Yes, Miss Fox. <laughs> I would like to know what are they investigating? Because it happened at 4.30 in the morning. There was no other witness but my granddaughter. And when the police got there, she probably was dead already. And they still hung outside until my granddaughter ran past and opened the door. If you're crazy, like he was plotting, like Michelle said, that he was trying to plan this, would you move a body? He killed my daughter in the bedroom. When he heard the cops coming in, he drug her into the bathroom where then he attempted to stab himself a couple of times. That's planned. Now, if my granddaughter wasn't there, what would he have done? He would have said somebody broke in, tried to kill him, killed her. And the the DA, when we were speaking to her, she couldn't tell me how the body looked. I haven't, she said she's waiting for papers, but I have pictures. She wasn't just stabbed several times. She was sliced, sliced up. And for them to give him a bond on that, 
let's be clear. Right, let's be clear. He took her brain out, took out her heart. He gutted her like a fish, and even worse. How can that judge, Judge Robert Johnson, how can he give bond? And the insane part is that he did it in the past. The young man that he gave bond to came out and killed another young man in front of his parents. How do you do that? He's obviously a danger to society if he sits there and he chops this woman's body up. Where is the justice? Why was his bail not revoked? How did his bail go from, go from being $2 million down to $300,000? I'm 100% sure that that judge saw those photos. He saw the file as he was making this decision. He had to. But I'm making sure that he does because I'm trying to send those pictures to every legal person down there so that they see exactly what he did. Exactly. That's your whole goal tonight, and I want to make it clear so our viewers can know. You don't want him out on bond, number one. No. And also because you fear for the safety of your granddaughter, Ms. Fowl. Correct. Well, Correct. Well, the whole family fears for their the safety. Whole. Yeah. The whole family does. If he gets out and makes his way anywhere close to that baby, he's going to try and take out whoever has her. And we're going to take him out. You know, we that that's that's a real fear. How can a judge do that? I'm extremely baffled. I feel like Robin is being murdered over and over again. The fact that the cop she Robin made two phone calls to the police. Uh, as the last phone call was hanging up, the police were pulling up. This is said in an interview by a mm. lieutenant. In an interview, I believe it's on Fox. So. How much time did it take from when the first officer got there to when the second officer got there? Mm -hmm. Because they could not breach with one officer. Mm -hmm. He stood out front. When the second officer got there, he says they walked around the back. That's when they saw Essence running to the front. How much time did it take them? Because you cannot mutilate a body in that way in five minutes. You cannot take out somebody's brain, slice them from here all the way down their entire body. Her, them photos show her being sewn up by a thick rope. So mm -hmm. She looked like a rag doll being sewn back together. Mm -hmm. That takes time for you to mutilate a body like that. And why does he not have uh, abuse of a corpse? Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's what I want to know. And they won't tell us anything. And they um, won't release the records. So far, um, yeah. I think about three media outlets have done a right to know request, and they've denied every single one of them. What are they hiding? That's what I want to know. Because my son was killed here, and the young man killed a teacher while her 11-year-old was in the car. They, he didn't get a bond. No. He's not no. getting out of jail, and her family wants the death penalty. Well, guess what? So do I. I reached out to Judge Robert Johnson for a comment today. His staff says he's on Christmas break and won't be back until January 28th. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with more Factor Uncensored. And welcome back to the Factor Uncensored. We continue our discussion about the murder of Robin Simpson. As we've reported earlier tonight, the family's main concern is what they consider a low bond for her husband, the accused killer in this case. Joining us to talk about it live tonight from more perspective, Andy Kahn of Houston Crime Stoppers. First of all, hearing this family's story from Philadelphia, and of course, Robin was here in Houston living with her husband. Your perspective on hearing what they're going through. Hey, man, I've been around for 30-plus years. I'm a board member of Parents of Murdered Children and Surviving Family Members of Homicide. This is one of the worst cases that I've ever listened to. I mean, absolutely horrific, and my heart goes out to this family. And now they're thrust into this other world, and that's the criminal justice system. Mm -hmm. And now they've got to figure out what's going to happen, how they're going to figure their way through the system, and, of course, the priority is keeping this person from g actually getting bond, and that's where we're going to come in. And you hear, when you hear initially $340,000, but you know the reality is 10% of that, yep. and $34,000 
for a professional in this day and age is very attainable, especially if you have property, you have other family members. Yeah, I'm actually surprised he hasn't bonded out right now. What I would tell this family and actually everybody in the state of Texas is that by statute, a judge has to grant a bond. The only offense a judge cannot give a bond for is capital murder. And this is sadly not a capital murder. Isaiah, for what, the last two... And really quick, yeah. what makes this different from capital murder and what we know it is now? Because it's a single death. Capital murder is multiple murders, also in the commission of yet another crime of itself. So the last two legislative sessions, we have actually tried to get a bill passed that would give judges discretion not to grant bond to defendants charged with certain horrific violent crimes. Certainly this one would qualify. For whatever reasons, it has yet to pass. I see no downside in giving judges simply discretion. Right now, they don't have discretion. Could this judge have set an enormous high bond? Absolutely. And we've seen that happen lately. And because of the segments that Randy Wallace and I have been doing on your station, breaking bonds, we have seen astronomically high bonds. In this particular case, I would classify this as a low bond considering the circumstances and the brutality of the death. Now, the family wanted a very high bond, and, and I'm sure in a perfect world they would want no bond. But what does it take? What is the criteria for a judge to say, I am going to put this at a million dollars, two million dollars, three million dollars? A lot of it's public outrage. And again, you know, sadly, who the victim is. You remember the takeoff murder. You remember when takeoff was murdered. You had a guy that had with no criminal history that had, what, a million dollar bond. And that's because of the notoriety of the victim. So what this family needs to do is continue to do what they do. I understand that they have a petition mm -hmm. on change.org. They yeah. have a petition that's asking the judge for a high bond. They need to continue to do what we do. I will now step in and help this family make sure that this person doesn't get a bond. So public outrage right now is their best weapon. Now, when you say you want the judge to change, the judge does have the ability to come in and say, look, even though the suspect is behind bars now, I'm increasing this bond. The judge can say, you know what, I've taken a look at the totality of the case, I've looked more at the records, and I don't think this is in the best interest of public safety. And obviously, anybody looking at this would just go absolutely bonkers to say that releasing this guy is in the best interest of public safety, and especially this family and an eight-year-old girl that's going to be traumatized for the rest of your life. So judges have the ultimate discretion. They are the umpire. They decide balls and strikes. The judge can say, you know what, I'm going to increase the bond because it's my understanding you have the means of getting out. And I don't think this is in the best interest, so I can do that. All right. Andy Kahn from Crime Stoppers, we want to thank you for your expertise here on this matter. And of course, we will put you in touch with the family as well. We also want to thank photographer Tori Walker, who brought us this story. Still ahead tonight on The Factor Uncensored, an update on a